Appreciate you, man. Um, coaches, what's going on out there? Um, first of all, before we get started, man, I really want to want to thank Coach G for this opportunity, man, um, to present to you guys. Uh, it's it's an amazing uh, opportunity uh, for all of us. You know, during this weird time that we're in right now, um, we're in uncharted waters as coaches. You know, working from home. So for us to be able to to find ways to to learn and listen to other coaches and really do a good job of honing and cultivating our skills, man, it's a, it's an opportunity awesome opportunity. So again, um, thank you, coach. Uh, just a little bit about myself before we get started, man. Um, coach there was a derivative man. Um, I was born and raised in Southern California. Um, I was a basketball player all my life. Went to Corona High School. Um, didn't know anything about football uh, until, until a high school coach took a chance on me going into my, my senior year um, and allowed me the opportunity to, to play the game that I now love. Um, had a great senior year, ended up signing uh, my letter of in intent to play at the University of Colorado, where I played a defensive end there for four years. Um, during my time there, I played for the likes of uh, Dan Hawkins, John Embry, and Coach Mike McIntyre. Um, after I finished off there, I went on to the, sign with the New Orleans Saints as an undrafted free agent. Uh, had a good experience in the NFL, man, a cutthroat business, but just from uh, seeing some of the players that I got to interact and the coaches I got to interact with, it was an awesome opportunity. Um, I got my start in the profession 2015 as a recruiting intern at the, my alma mater at CU, um, where I really kind of got a, my ability to, to understand um, how to move and maneuver in the profession. Um, I worked my way up through there, became a graduate assistant in 2016. Uh, working with the outside linebackers and defensive line. Did that for about three years. And then uh, 2019, I've been here at the University of Kansas. Um, so just a little bit about my outside linebacker philosophy that I like to share with my guys. Um, I want my guys to understand the huge responsibility it, it is for them to be an outside linebacker in the 3-4 defense. Um, in order for our defense to be successful, our effort level and our physical nature of play have to be at a high level at all times. Um, I think for our guys, um, they, they're relied on a lot in our defense to do different things. So intellectually, they have to be there. At all times, physically, we have to be there. And again, our effort lever has to be at a high level in order to, to succeed and be the unit that we want to be. As far as essentials goes, there are four things that I'm looking for with our outside linebackers, right? Effort, technique, discipline, and toughness. Um, effort, everybody knows, right? It's between you and you. Um, Effort cannot be something that's negotiated, you know. Something that's required for all of our guys out there is once you hit the field, it's, it's in high effort, whether it's in individual drills, um, group install, team. We have to be at a high effort at all times while we're on the football field. Um, technique. Uh, we're technicians. Again, as we go on through this presentation, you're going to see the different techniques that three, four outside linebackers have to understand. Um, but as far as, you know, the run game, pass game, um, pass rush, uh, there are a lot of techniques that they have to master in this defense. So we have to be technicians in all phases of our game. Number three, discipline. Discipline wins, in my opinion. Um, having the ability to, to understand and, and, and do the little things, master the, the minute details, um, it's the difference between making and missing a play. So we have to do a great job of being disciplined, not only on the field, but off the field as well. Um, going to class, meeting tutors, those things that, that matter off the field or what will translate to, to how we play on the field. And last but not least, toughness. And with toughness, that's mental and physical, right? We want to make sure that we physically wear down our, our opponent quarter after quarter, but also the mental, mental toughness side. We want to have that side uh, mastered as well. So my teaching philosophy, um, I come from a teaching background. My dad was a high school educator, high school administrator um, throughout my youth. Um, so teaching is definitely something that, uh, that I take seriously. Um, and as us coaches, we are teachers in, in our in our world, right? We have to do a good job of understanding our players. And what I mean by that is everybody learns differently, okay? Uh, some guy might like it written. Some guys might like it on the board. Some guys like a video. Some guys need it in walkthrough. We have to do a good job as teachers understanding, okay, what are the best ways I can get this information to my players and, and, and find incorporate teaching skills that, that, that we can use to, to, to help master that. Um, one of the quotes that I love is you get what you emphasize, right? What you emphasize is what you're going to get out of your guys. Um, whether, whether it be in the meeting that day, on the field, whatever it is that you're emphasized, that's what you're going to get. Uh, one of my favorite quotes that I got from uh, my head coach, Mike McIntyre, who I you know, definitely believe has helped mold my coaching career so far is knowledge equals confidence equals playing fast, right? 
the more and the better that your kids know what they're doing, the more confidence they're going to have. And, and, and the more confidence they have, the faster they're going to play. So again, as teachers, we have to do a good job of installing that knowledge, giving them the confidence to go out there and play fast. And we all know this as coaches, our job is to make them do the things that they want, don't want to do so they can achieve the things that they want to achieve. Now, as far as practice goes with our outside linebackers, I want to create a fun environment. I want to make sure when we're out there, we're loose, we're ready to work. We, you know, it's, at the end of the day, it's a game of football. It's a game that we love. So we still want to make the game fun. But at the same time, I want to overload practice. I want to make practice harder than the games. Why? So when that moment comes in the games, it's something that they've done before. They're, the moment is not new to them. They're, they're comfortable in, in that moment. Okay. So you might you may ask, how do you how do you get that? Um, kind of setting in your practice. Well, through peer pressure from your teammates, right? Not only from the coach, but from your teammates. And, and by that, I mean through the competition that you breed in your drills, right? You want to make sure in your drills that you're incorporating the competition aspects of it. So that way, when, when the stakes are high in practice, when those levels are raised, when those same stakes are, are high in games, again, it's something that they've seen before. And I love this quote by the Navy Seals. We don't rise to the occasion. We fall to the level of our training. Meaning how we train is how we're going to play, okay? How we train every day in practice is how we're going to play on Saturdays, on Fridays, on Sundays. That's what we want our kids to understand when we hit the practice field. Now, one thing that I love um, about outside linebackers and, and, and just in general is I have a practice checklist, okay? So within our defense, we have a lot of, um, a lot of skills that our, our outside linebackers have to understand. So with every skill they have, there's going to be a drill. And with that drill, we have to understand, again, through practice, when can we, when can we fit time to make um, those, skill, those drills incorporated into practice. So do a good job of detailing your practice. And by that, I mean understand, you know, what, what, what skills are we working every day or in this defense? What, are, what do our guys have to, have to have mastered before they hit the practice field? Map that out and find ways to incorporate that throughout your practice agenda track of the different skills that you're working, the different drills that you're working every day, you're going to see by the end of, you know, I have here 15 practices for spring ball, but by the end of fall camp, you've repped this skill so many times that these guys have to have it mastered by now. So do a good job of detailing your practices and, and understanding, okay, what skills do we need to work? How can we drill them? And then what time capacity can we get those drills incorporated in practice? So, so getting started here, okay, our outside linebacker uh, responsibility. And this is how I envision it in my mind when I see um, what we're responsible for on a pie chart. But as an outside linebacker, you know, a big chunk of our, our responsibility is, one, we have to be able to stop the run, okay? We have to do a good job of setting edges and stopping the run as an outside linebacker. The next portion is getting after the quarterback, right? Everybody want, talks about sacks. We have to be able to get after the quarterback as, a, as an outside linebacker. And that last piece of the pie chart is what we do in coverage for a 3-4 outside linebacker. There are going to be times where we are called to do a good job of covering tight ends, running backs out of the flat, rerouting receivers. So we have to do a good job of being able to work those three things. The main two things that I want to focus on today is definitely playing the run, stopping the run, and then getting after the quarterback, okay? Now diving into the run game. So when we get our call in, right, here's the run progression that I want our outside linebackers to think, right, when they get a call. What's my alignment? Okay. Where do I line up in this call? And then who am I king, right? They're going to have different keys depending on the call and, and, and the set that is um, adjusted to them. Pre-snap, that's pre-snap. Post-snap, they're recognizing, okay, what kind of block am I getting? Once I've recognized the block, destroying the block. And after we've destroyed, we've controlled our blocker, pursuit of the football. So that is the run progression that we want our guys and mentality to have when they get a call, when they step on the football field, okay? As far as their eyes go right, on, on, in these situations, right? We wanna make sure we perif the ball. We don't key the ball, we're gonna perif it out of the side of, our, side of our eye and we're gonna key the tip of the pad of whether it be the tackle, whether it be the tight end, wherever our key is on that specific play. When the ball snap, we're gonna look our hands into our target once we have our hands into our target, we have controlled our target, we want to peek into our proper gap. And again, once we've peeked in our proper gap, we're escaping, we're tracking the hip of the ball carrier. As far as the stance for our outside linebackers, we have two stances that they have to understand. 
We have a rush stance and a drop stance. You might ask why these two different stances for, for our defense. Our rush stance in our defense is more of an attacking style stance, okay? We're coming off the ball. We're, we're, we're trying to get knocked back. We're really trying to create havoc when we're in our rush stance. When we're in a drop stance, we're thinking more reactive, okay? Because we have to make sure, again, our tight end, our running back, our receiver, that they're not releasing for a pass. So it's more of a mirror step than an attack. Uh, when we're in our drop stance. So we'll get work out of both our rush and our drop stances within our defense. Okay. Our footwork, every day we will we'll, we'll start a drill with footwork, okay? And it'll, and it'll incorporate these three things, um, down block, a reach block, and a reach and gather footwork that will work um, between the two blocks. The down and the reach block, those are the two main blocks that, that um, outside linebackers are going to get, right? We we'll always tell them they have three main block, blocks, base, reach, and the cutoff. Um, the down and the reach is something that we'll come and start every day out in practice, okay? So you'll see here, we'll get them in a, in a rush stance, okay? All we want, make sure all their weight is on that front foot and they're kidding, they're um, periphering the ball right here. Here we're working the down block. We want to see good shuffle squeeze footwork, okay? What we are emphasizing here is a down block by a tackle or the tight end, you want to make sure that you're closing the hip of it. Once you see the ball handed off in the zone three scheme, turn around. Okay? Same thing here. Going down block, boom, blocks down. I'm closing the hip of that tackle or tight end. Once I see the ball handed off, I'm turning and running. Okay? Here we are, Kansas. Down block, shuffle squeeze. Ball's handed off, turn it on. So you want to make sure they get that footwork down because, again, a lot of the blocks that they're going to see are usually down blocks or reach blocks. Here is applied to the game, okay? Our boundary outside backer. Boom, he gets a down block. Squeeze to the hip of the tight end. Once I see the ball handed off, boom, now I can turn it on. So that's one of the first footwork phases that will work with our outside linebacker. The next block that they're going to see now after that, once, they, once they've done the down block, is a reach block, okay? And with the reach block, what we want to see is a step that we call an in-flight adjust, right? That tackle is trying to overreach our outside shoulder. We need to take the appropriate in-flight adjust step to get in position to play the reach block. I just got a question here for you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, when they get a when they uh, get a down block, are they going to perif for a kick out? Yeah, so that's something that we call a triangle read, right? On the down block, once the, uh, the block goes down, they want to get their eyes inside down the one lane for anything coming back. Could be a yell tight end, could be a pulling guard. Once they've cleared that inside that nothing is coming back, now their eyes go up to the near back. So th th and that's what we call a, a triangle read. Now, depending on the call, um, you know, if they know they're outside of everything, um, that, that perif could be, a, a, you know, just a, a real quick perif knowing, hey, regardless of what's coming back, I need to stay, stay outside everything. Um, but they will perif uh, something inside for something coming back. So now you see here with the reach block, that in-flight adjust step is what we're talking about, that, that back foot instead of going replacing Boom, he is adjusting now to the reach block that he's getting to help him again put, be in position to play the reach block. You see we have him shooting their hands, working the spear for the reach. Once they're in position, they're escaping to the outside. Got one, Justin? Yes, sir. Uh, will you wrong shoulder the pullers? Uh, it, it all depends, again, depending on the call um, and de depending on that player. Um, you know, this guy right here, number five, uh, Zer Kamar for us was a very strong guy, heavy-handed, right? So he could do a good job of going, meeting the puller, sticking his side, shooting his hands. You know, some guys aren't, aren't that guy. They like to avoid blocks. They like to get up and under. So a wrong arm might be, be the technique for that player. Um, so we don't really overcoach it again, depending on, I think, who that guy is. Whatever he can do to best get the job done um, is what we'll go with. Okay. So talking reach blocks here. Again, watching the boundary outside back of five, okay? 
gets the reach by, by the tight end and does a good job controlling it, has his eyes inside. So from a footwork standpoint, those are some of the two things that we will work uh, right off the bat um, as outside backers. Coach, in that last clip, what was the uh, outside linebacker's alignment? So to a tight end, we're always going to be one by one, meaning one yard outside, about one yard deep. Um, and then uh, within the defensive scheme, I'll have a, uh, you know, what well, he's a nine, eight technique. It'll tell him if he's responsible for that B gap or that C gap. So base alignment to a down tight end is always going to be about one by one. And then, you know, as you go on, um, you know, um, as far as uh, scouting teams and things like that, back away. Now we tell them, you know, performance align, you might get a little wider because you can expect run coming to you. Back to me, I might be able to get a little tighter to that tight end because I'm thinking run going away. So get ready to squeeze to the hip of that tackle. But again, base alignment is one by one um, for those outside backers. Now our hands. Um, as far as hands go, you, you see a bunch of different fancy words, pronated hands, supinated hands. All that means for our guys is pronated hands, our thumbs are down, supinated hands, th thumbs are up. And what we tell them is you want our thumbs up with high blocks, you want our thumbs down with low blocks, so cut blocks, things like that, where we have to protect our, our knees and our legs, thumbs are gonna be down. With our high blocks, run blocks that we play against, we're gonna keep our thumbs up and our elbows tight, okay? Real good emphasis on with the supinated hand again. Thumbs have to be up, elbows tight. That's where we work. All the muscles are being activated now. We're at our strongest point where we're doing things like that. Um, as far as gap placement, we're more, more, more times than not, we are always in a shaded alignment, meaning a one gap hand placement alignment. So our, what we teach for the hand placement will be um, the bicep of the tight end or tackle and that sternum or far uh, tit of, the, of, of that offensive alignment or tight end. If I'm head up alignment, which we're not allowed in in our defense, two gap, we call that a two gap hand placement. Our hands are going to be tit to tit, tit to tit right there on the pads, and we're going to use that as almost our steering wheel right there. Okay. So again, uh, one of our, our base drills that we'll start off with to, to get the hand placement down is our hand placement drill. Okay. And here we're teaching the defenders hand quickness. I want to see how fast you can get your arms straight from the ground to your man without cocking your arms back. The moment I cock my arms back, that's going to give my opponent time to get to my chest, and we don't want that at all, right? Whoever gets their hands inside fa the fastest wins. So we want to teach again quick hands, moving our hands straight from the ground to our man with our elbows tight. We also want to see eye control. We want to see you look your hands into your into your key. Look them into your key. Um, uh, uh, one of the phrases that our defensive line coach Quan Drake um, does uh, says, and he does a great job of it, is. Our, where our eyes is, our power is. So we want to make sure our power is where our eyes are looking at, and that is always going to be our key. What's going on? Coach, um, in regards to the outside linebackers addressing like, uh, down, down blocks and reach blocks, how does it change when they're two-gapping? Uh, we, we, never, we were never two-gap. Again, we are, we are uh, always a shaded alignment, and we're always a one-gap player. So we won't uh, play two gaps. Um, as far as, um, you know, um, um, head up alignments. Um, so here you'll see the group work, working from a shaded alignment, working a shaded hand placement right here to a head up alignment, back to a shaded alignment. And again, with that shaded alignment, you want to see hand placement on the bicep and that far tit or the sternum of your, of your tight end or your tackle. You want to make sure your eyes are locked into your key. They're seeing what they're hitting. Um, those are the two things, again, and hand quickness. Those are what we are looking for during this drill. Here it is right here, okay? It's a good view. He's going shaded alignment. Right now, I see he's looking at his key. I like that his hands are going straight from the, from the ground to his man. There's no cock, cocking going on with his arm. So I know that he's not, he's not wasting any time with his movement. I like that he has his hands on that bicep. He has it on that far tit. He has the block control, okay? Now, sometimes uh, what I've seen with this drill, that the guys like to rush it. They like to just go fast, shoot their hands, bring them down, shoot them, bring them down. When they're shooting their hands, you want to emphasize the grab. You want to make sure that they're grabbing 
where their hands are supposed to be, really getting a good job of fitting, fitting on, that, on that offensive blocker. Now he's going to a head-up alignment. Here he's working straight, tit-to-tit, tit-to-tit hand placement. Again, tit-to-tit hand placement. He wants to make sure he's not cocking his arms. He's shooting straight from the ground to his man. He does a good job of grabbing his, his, his offensive lineman. And the same thing, we're finishing off again in the shaded alignment. So they'll get these reps again over and over. And this is usually to start the practice or pre-practice to kind of get the blood flowing, the juices flowing. But you want to make sure they know their hand placement, whether you're a shaded alignment team or a head up alignment team, you want to make sure that, that their hand placement is where it needs to be. And again, keys that you want to make sure you're seeing, right? No cockage in the arms, straight from the ground to their man. Thumbs up, elbows are tight. You want to make sure they have tight inside hands, okay? And you want to make sure their eyes are keyed into where they're shooting their hands, where their key is at all times, okay? Now, once they've worked the hand placement, you also have to work hand replace, okay? You know, during these drills, you always do a good job of putting them in the place where they, their hands in the place where they need to be. But we all know when you get on that football field, sometimes sometimes they start off with outside hand, right? Sometimes inside the offensive lineman of that tight end has inside hands on them. So they have to do a good job of understanding how to replace their hands in the run game, okay? So we'll go, so what we'll do is we'll start them off with a, a single hand replace. Hold on here, let me slow it down. They're going one arm hand replace. So right now at the start of this clip, Jelani Brown, he has outside hands right now, okay? So he's got to do a good job of working to replace his outside hand to the inside and regaining his hand leverage um, as they shuffle down. So right there, you see him do a good job of replacing that outside hand, and they're going to do this all the way down. They're going to continue to replace outside hand to inside hand. Outside hand to inside hand. They're going to continue to replace their hand to, to gain inside leverage. Once they've done master the single arm replace, they'll go two hand replace. Okay. Now they're replacing both the hands at the same time. And again, same thing here as far as hand placement keys. You want to make sure that their thumbs are up, their elbows are tight when they're replacing their hands all the way down. So here we go, here we go. Single, single hand replace. If you got outside hands, you got to replace. They're gonna to continue to replace their single hand replace all the way down the game inside leverage. They wanna make sure they keep their hands tight while they're doing it. And they still wanna give a punch as they're replacing their hands, okay? So they've worked hand placement. They understand where their hands are placed when they're in a single, when they are, uh, you know, in a single gap defense or a two gap defense if they're ever in that situation. They know where their hands are need to be okay they've worked hand replace they don't have the ideal hand placement needed um during the play so they need to understand okay if i have outside hands i need to come with a tight underneath move to, re re to regain my my hand leverage okay now we'll go into releases we'll teach them three different releases okay a shrug release an arm over release and a rip release we're going to work the shrug release as a two-hand release when the ball has not been committed or declared we're gonna work that release. Once we have the block controlled, they will work a two arm, a two arm down and away movement. We're gonna work our arm over as a single arm uh, release. Again, they're gonna work that. And again, the, ball, the block has been controlled. The ball has not been committed or declared. They are gonna work a single arm over release. And then the rip release is when that ball has been committed or declared to the outside. So we're thinking outside zone here, outside stretch. That ball is outside of me. They're gonna work a rip release in order to get to the ball. So here you're gonna see the shrug, okay? You're gonna see a good job of him locking out, locking out his arms, controlling the block, running his feet. Once he has his block controlled, a two arm down and away movement. So press down and away, okay? And you wanna make sure when they work it down and away that they're coming to balance as they shrug release. They're coming to balance. You don't want them just running up field because that's what they'll do in games. Once I shrug release, boom, I'm under control. I'm ready to make a play. Boom, press lockout. Peek into my gap, down and away, under control, under control. Press lockout, peek, 
down and away. Let's lock out, down and away. Coach, uh, can you just describe um, their foot placement as they're engaging in shedding blocks? Um, by that, or by foot placement, they they should have a you know a wide base with their feet underneath them at all times while they're shedding blocks. Um, so what, when I'm working the shrug release, as I push it down and away, you really want them to push on that inside foot of where that where they're throwing that blocker away to. So as I'm shrugging down and away, I'm pushing off that inside foot, and I'm still keeping my wide base at all times. If their feet get too narrow or too close together, they're going to lose power. Um, so I make sure, again, during this shrug release, I have a wide base. I'm pushing off and keeping that wide base with me at all times. Is that the question? Is that, is that, the, is that what the, the question or the, the answer you're looking for? Uh, I believe so, Coach. I'll let you know if you said something different. Yes, sir. Thank you. No doubt. So here we go. Boom, I get a reach block. At this point right now, I'd say nine. Najee has his block control. He's locked out. He's got his hands inside in the right proper placement where we want him. Okay. Now at this point, it's a peak down and away movement. Down and away movement. Okay. That allows him to get in on the play. And again, the shrug release works once I have my blocker controlled. What you'll see a lot of times with young football players and even some of the guys that we have now is, boom, once they get in this position right here, they're already trying to look for the ball or, or make a release. Well, if, if, if you don't have the block controlled, that offensive lineman, that tackle, whoever that guy is, has leverage, he's going to knock you back. So the main emphasis is you want to make sure the block is controlled before I release anywhere. Now we're going to work the arm over release. Same, very similar to the shrug release, but now it's, it's, it's a, a single arm release, okay? Again, press, have them locked out, arm over. And what you like here is it's a nice, tight arm over. It's not a, a big swim because once you give a big swim, you're exposing your rib cage and your chest to that tight end, that offensive lineman, to, to get a hand on you. You want to make it a tight, swift arm movement like you're almost like there's a like there's a damn uh, apple on on the um, tackle or tight end's shoulder, and I'm just punching it off. I'm punching it off, nice and tight. Boom. Boom. Press lockout. Arm over. It's a little wide there. I'd like it a little tighter. But again, you see what I mean. If 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 it's if it gets too wide, you see the area that you're exposing. You see the area that you're exposing to that offensive player. It needs to be nice and tight. Good. Nice and tight. Boom. Down and away. Down and away. And again, what, I was, what we were talking about with footwork, as I'm pulling down and away, this foot right here should be the should be the foot where his weight is pushing off of as I'm making my release. That's the foot I want to push off of. Boom, arm over. Now, I don't like that he's running up field. I like him a little bit more under control. But that's where you want to get your power your power at when I'm get, escaping these blocks. Peak, release, under control. Under control. So nine, again, he should be one by one. He's, he's keying that tight end, the tip of the pad of that tight end. Boom. I like his hand placement. He's fighting the block. He has it controlled. He sees the ball's committed inside. It's declared. Boom. Arm over release. Arm over release. And again, the power is going to come off that inside leg where I'm throwing the blocker to. His weight should be on that in on that inside foot. I'm pushing off. Boom. Arm over release. Boom. He does a good job. Knock him back. He's got him under control right here. Ball's committed inside. You're gonna see it. Boom. Swift arm over release. See how his 
that swim is tight, that arm over, it's not too wide. He doesn't have it up in the sky. It's right there, right over his arm. Boom, he sees the ball commit. He releases to make a play. So again, that arm over should be a tight, swift movement. Nothing to expose our rib cage or chance. We want to keep it nice and tight, nice and tight. And here is the rip release, okay? So what we're saying here with the rip release, here's a running back. We're saying this is a running back right here. We're saying it is an outside zone play. That ball is going to the perimeter right now. So it's not committed or declared to the inside. So I, now I got to rip and run. I got to rip through his shoulder and run to make a play on that, on that outside zone play. Boom, I rip. I'm ripping and running. I'm ripping and running. Okay? Same thing here. We're saying it's outside zone. You're ready to rip and run. Press, peak, rip and run. Ball declared to the outside. So you can either do that depending on what you have. You can do that on your man. You can do it on, 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 on some sleds. But again, the main emphasis on the rip and the run is the ball is declared outside. Okay? It's an outside run scheme. You want to rip and run. And what we're saying for the rip is if we're ripping and running, that offensive lineman now that I have my back to him is going to push me towards that play. So he's doing me a favor. He's basically escorting me to the play on that outside zone scheme, right? So once I see that ball's outside of me, boom, I'm turning my back, I'm ripping, I'm running. Any kind of push or movement from that offensive tackle or tight end is now going to push me in the direction of a play. So we had no film of the of the uh, four, uh, outside linebacker. So I wanted you guys to take a look at at the four eye at the four eye on the rip and run scheme. Okay. Boom! Right now he knows that ball's outside of him. He knows there is no no play in his B gap. So he's going to rip and run, knowing that that tackle is going to push him in the direction of the play. What's up, Justin? Got a couple questions here, Coach. Um, <clears throat> the first one is, uh, do you teach releases based on the leverage of the defender to the blocker? So, example, an arm over when shaded and a shrug when head up. So, the, the, they're both, they're both going to work those regardless if they're shaded um, or when they're shaded, if that makes sense. They're going to work the, the shrug shaded. They're going to work the arm over when they're shaded. Um, it's really just depending on the running scheme, okay? If that ball has been committed, has not committed or declared, they're both different tools to allow those guys to escape their block. You know, you can still shrug again with your hand placement on the bicep and that inside tip just as well as you could arm over, if that makes sense. Um, or if you're head up, uh, for example. So we're going to give them those two tools depending on, you know, what works best for them. They're going to um, um, use those accordingly. And the other question here, Coach, is uh, <clears throat> after teaching the technique, do you have reaction drills so they react and use the proper technique? So going through like um, our tackling drills, we'll, we'll go through that, a drill that we call gap defender. So boom, as we go on, you've taught them the release, you've taught them the hand placement, you teach them how to strike a block or incorporate ball carriers in the drill, okay? We'll give them different run reads based on the ball carrier and you just want to see them use their, their, their shrug release, their rip release, their arm over release, again, depending on if the ball carrier is outside, if he's declared inside, you want to see him use those same releases as well. Okay, so we've talked about hand placement. We've talked about releases. We've talked about our footwork. Now let's go into, you know, defeating the block, striking the block. Um, you know, the four blocks that we have on, on defeating the block are your strike, right? We're going to get into the strike on coming out of your hips, keeping your eyes, your chin up as we're striking. Once they've st struck a block, you want to see them press and lock out, get extension. The block is now controlled. I have control of the blocker. Once I have control, now I'm going to peek into my appropriate gap, whether I'm a B gap player, whether I'm a C gap player, D gap player. You want to make sure that they're peeking in the appropriate gap and then the release that we've talked about. <clears throat> when we talk about strike, we're going to talk about eyes up, chin up, neck on the brace. With our eyes up, you want to make sure you see what you hit at all times. You want to make sure you're seeing your hands get to your to your target. Again, you want to see who and what you're hitting. We want our chin up because we don't want to hit with the crown of our head, right? 
for, for safety purposes, our eyes, our face is always going to be up as we're striking. And our neck on the brace is going to be the support of our helmet on the back of our pad. Okay. So we're, what we're going through right here is something that we go, through, we call the explosion series, okay? And we're going to kind of incorporate um, our hand placement drill with our explosion drills as well. So the first thing we're seeing here is quick hands, okay? You just want to, you want to see your, your, your outside linebackers get your hands straight from the ground to their man as quick as possible, okay? And again, as we're striking, eyes got to be up. Chin has to be up, neck is on the brace to call for, for support, okay? Now, once they've got, gone through quick hands, we go through something called six-point explosion. Six-point explosion, you see they're in a six-point stance, meaning hands, knees, feet are on the ground. My knees are, my toes are curled underneath me, my fingers are caged. Again, here you want to see quick hand placement, hands going straight from the ground to your man. You want to see a flat back, eyes up, chin up, neck on the brace as we strike, and you want to see complete hip extension. You want to see his ass cheeks basically bite into his shorts, almost penny pinching his shorts. We call it pinching the penny. That way we know he's at full power. Uh, we really can compare this drill to a power clean, right? If you're, and any of you power lifters know, when you're power cleaning, you want complete hip extension because that's going to tell you you're at full power. It's the same thing here. When we see these guys, shoot out of the shoot out of their stance we want to see complete hip extension and now i see he has a, a, what i like to call a triple extension meaning from his shoulders through his hips down to his knees it's a sing, it's a it's one line so i know he's at full power as he's striking that bag i like that his eyes are up he's seeing what he's hitting i would like his thumbs up and his elbows in rolled inside so now i know he's at complete power with his hands but this is kind of the body position that you want as they're getting out of their stance in the six-point explosion. So here's a good look at it, okay? Here's the finishing point. You see it, again, that triple extension from the shoulders down to his knees. It's a flat back, okay? You can see that he's pinching his penny right now. If, if a penny was, was right in between his butt cheeks, he's got to be pinching it, okay? His eyes are up. He's seeing what he's hitting. His thumbs up, elbows are tight. This is a beautiful picture of, of how you want the drill to look. Okay, so now once our outside linebackers have gotten the six-point um, explosion drill, now you move on, on their feet to a two-point layout, okay? Two-point because outside backers, we're going to be in the two-point stance. So what you want to see here is you want to see the same thing carry over. Even though we're in a stance, you want to see the same fundamentals. I want to see your eyes up, your chin up as you're striking. I want to see your hands going straight from the ground to the man. And then I want to see your hips completely rolled through, and you're going to hold that position. You're going to lay out. We don't want them to bring their feet yet. All we wanted to make sure, again, here is that their hips are firing as they're coming out of their stance. We want to make sure their hips are firing. Start for the view here. But again, you want to see him in this position. Just from this angle, I can tell you he's in that straight line. He has that flat back from his shoulders all the way down now to his feet. I know he's in that, that linear line, that flat line. Thumbs up or his elbows are tight. You wanna see those same things carry over. And again, the main thing here is hip extension, hip roll. Make sure their, their hips roll all the way through as they're striking back. And they're just gonna lay out. They're gonna hold themselves. They're not bringing their feet. They're not bringing their feet. They're just laying out, getting real comfortable and used to their hips being completely unlocked and rolled in. Um, guys who haven't done this drill a lot, it's going to challenge your core strength, you know, because to, to hold to hold themselves and to completely get your hips rolled through is going to take a lot of core strength, a lot of core work. So as much as possible that they can do this drill is going to help build that core, core strength. It's going to help them be comfortable really getting their hips unlocked. Okay, so now once we've completed the six point, okay, of, of, of shooting our hands and our hips. They've completed the two point of shooting our, our hands, our hips, and now doing it out of a two point stance. We're going to go into something called two point base and drive. And now we're kind of tying in now. Okay, we've, strict, we've struck the block. Now we want to see you bring your feet on contact, find the ball carrier, and work a release. 
Boom. So you shoot. I'm getting out. I struck my hands. I'm bringing my hips. Now I'm running my feet on contact. And now you're going to peak for the ball carrier. And this goes back to one of those questions I asked earlier, how you can work your releases in different drills. You can do that right here, okay? Now work a shrug release, down and away, boom. And make sure they stay under control as they come off the bat. But those are different ways that you can incorporate your releases through your drills, okay? We good, Justin? No questions? No, sir, we're good. Perfect. Now we'll get into something called steer drill, okay? So now in the steer drill, we've incorporated now our hand placement. We know how to strike the block. We know how to, uh, where our hands need to be on the block, okay? But now what about um, those, those times where your guys aren't in the proper position, right? Where they do get reached. What tools are you going to give them to, to fight a reach block when they're reached by a tight tackle or a tight end? That's what we're going to work here in a steel drill, okay? We're going to start them off in a losing position, and these guys here are going to have to learn how to fight pressure with pressure, okay? Their hands are going to be inside. You want to see them work a push and pull with their hands as well as the proper reach and gap of footwork to put their body back in their gap, okay? What I'm looking for here is, so you see here, okay? Here's the defense. Here's the offense. The offense is in a winning position right now. As a as the defender, I have to do a good job of one locking out my block, getting him under control. Once I have him control, I have to steer him to help make that edge a little bit shorter for me to to regain my gap. And I want to work the proper reach and gather footwork, meaning hey, I have a nice wide base at all times. My feet aren't coming close together, they're staying wide apart so I can stay strong to regain my gap. Now, what we tell them is once our inside hip has passed the outside hip of the, of the blocker, work your release. Work your release. And more times than not, because it's a, a, a reach block, you're thinking outside zone, it could be a rip release, it could be a shrug release, arm over release, but we want them to work a release once they've gotten into their point. So, boom, right here. You see him do a good job of locking out the blocker. He does a good job of keeping his feet hot. He has a nice wide base. You would like to see a little bit more steer here, but what makes this work is his footwork, okay? He does a good job of executing the desired footwork we want. And once he's in this position right here to where his inside hip is clear, the outside hip of the blocker, work your release, okay? Now we do this drill on online because we want to still emphasize knockback, okay? You still want your defender to work knockback as he's going down the line of scrimmage. You don't want him to lose ground, and you don't want him to just stay status quo. You still want him working up the line of scrimmage, okay? Two, you want to make sure his shoulders stay square as he's working this drill. His shoulders still want to stay west and east, okay? The second they go north and south, he's going to lose leverage on the ball carrier. As he works a release, the ball carrier is going to have an easy job getting to the outside, and it's going to be a lot more work for you to open up that hip to turn and run and chase the ball carry. So really make sure they keep square shoulders, a nice wide base, and they're working knockback down the line to, to get into the backfield. So here it is. Here's a good job. Najee does a good job working the steer. He's making that, that edge shorter for him. Now, I would have liked him to create more knockback here, but he does a good job of working the steer. My inside hip is clear, the outside hip, now I can work a release. Now what I would tell him here is just to clean up the footwork. I think his feet are getting a little too close together. But again, like we saw in the last one, we want to make sure we're keying the footwork, we're keying the shoulders to stay square, and again, that they're getting knocked back as they're working the steer drill. And again, what makes this work is the lockout. The lockout to, to, to emphasize that we have the block control. There is no such thing as steering if that offensive lineman or tight ends in my chest. So do a good job of locking out and getting control of your block. This is how you want it to look here. Boom. Locked out. He's working, reaching, gather. I like this base. I would have liked him to keep reaching. He goes a little too early here, but I like that is that he's knocking that offensive player back. He's knocking him back. Okay, so we've kind of gone through right now um, our series of hand placement, footwork, um, and block destruction. How to strike a block, how to get rid of a block, how to release. Okay, 
once those guys have mastered those drills, okay? So again, a lot of these drills, I like, I like to spend time doing those in pre-practice, like your hand placement, like your footwork. You don't kinda, you don't want those drills to, to take up uh, your individual time during practice. So these are some things that you can do. Hey, pre-practice, we're out 10, 15 minutes early. Hey, let's knock out our, our footwork drills. Let's knock out our hand placement. Now we get into block recognition. And block recognition now is gonna tie in kinda all these techniques our footwork, again, hand placement, um, things like that um, to, to, to really understand how we're going to play a base reach and cut off block. Um, going in this, our outside linebackers really work uh, a main of three techniques. Uh, a nine technique, meaning we're one yard, uh, one by one from that down tight end, and we're a D-gap player, okay? We're going to play eight technique, same alignment as a nine technique, so one by one from the tight end, but we're going to be a C-gap player, and then no tight end at all. We're lined up on the tackle, something that we call a ghost six, okay? So those will be the techniques that will work from a block recognition standpoint. Here you'll see is a block, uh, the base block, okay? Base block is what we're telling them is, hey, that tight end, he's just trying to, he's just basing you out. He's just trying to knock you out. He's not trying to reach your outside shoulder. He's taking steps to your inside shoulder, the inside hip, and he's trying to really widen out either that C or that uh, um, D gap from a tight end or tackle. How we want to play the block is with knockback. Zur should be doing a good job of stepping to his key as outside linebackers, whether we're keying a tight end or a tackle, we're going to key the outside tip of the pad of that opponent. We want to do a good job of stepping to our key and executing the same hand placement and strike rules that we would uh, during those individual segments, okay? That's how we play a base block. Now, what I don't like here when we play base block with your outside backers, again, with the shoulders, his shoulders are going north and south. Well, again, what this is going to allow to do is for those running backs who like to cut the ball outside, it's going to be harder for us to reopen our shoulders to play an outside run. So what you want them to do, again, he should attack the block, but he has inside hands, and you want to keep the outside arm free when we play a base block. Again, that's outside linebacker. Our reach block, okay? And you're going to see on this film, we're working drop footwork because he's being more reactive to the step. He wants to take that in-flight adjust step and then play knockback on a reach. As outside backers, there's no way we should get reach. We already have leverage on that tight end and that tackle, but what helps us play the reach block is with knockback. If we can knock that, a guy who's going, you know, west and east, we're going north and south. If we can do a good job of knocking him back to the backfield, we're resetting the edge, even if he reaches our outside shoulder. If we do a good job of getting knocked back, we're ultimately setting the edge with his body and our body. So he does a good job mirroring the step. He's getting knocked back. He's keying the outside tip of the pad. He has good hand placement. At this point right now, I'd say he has a, the block control. What's up, Justin? Coach, uh, what uh, question here. What, what's the technique for setting the edge? As far as setting the edge, again, it's base and reach. We play them with knockback. So I'm gonna t I'm gonna take power leverage and power angles with my near foot. I'm gonna step near foot, near shoulder. My hand placement should be far titter sternum and bicep. And once I've I've established my hand placement, you want to make sure you keep your outside arm free. Your shoulders should be going west and east. They shouldn't be turned north and south. You want to stay square to the line of scrimmage. And then once what I like to tell them as well is when we have the block controlled try do a good job of condensing that inside gap so we call it a power scoot technique where i'm scooting down i'm scooting i'm trying to condense that either c or d gap with the tackle or tight end's body to really create a shorter gap if, uh, if that answers your question yes sir uh how far how far past the line of scrimmage you never want to go too deep because you know the second you get too deep now you're you're widening you're widening inside gaps so I typically like to create two yards in the back in the line of scrimmage. I think if you're two yards deep, you're you're in a good position there to play the the, the base block. The reach block, um, reach block sometimes can get a little tricky in my opinion because sometimes some of these offensive linemen or tight ends they like to give up so much ground. By the time you're you're getting off, you're trying to create knockback. Now you find yourself three or four yards back in the backfield, right? So I think uh, when you're setting the edge, you really have to be cognitive of how deep I am in the line of, uh, into the backfield. Typically for me, I like anywhere between two and three yards um, back in the backfield. A uh, couple of questions uh, just came in. How do you play an eight tech versus reach? 
Okay. Um, part of my language when it comes to this, but what we say in our room as a tech with a reach, fuck a reach. Okay. When I'm when when I'm getting reached by by a tight end um, as an a technique, he's helping me out. I'm a C gap player. So what I'm going to do is we're going to strike him. We're going to make him think that we're reached, but our eyes are now going to peek inside. I'm, I'm already in my gap. So the reach block at an A technique is probably the easiest block, block to play um, um, out of the three. And then one more question here, Coach. Uh, do you want to keep the, the offensive lineman's shoulders squared at the line of scrimmage when you set the edge? Uh, it, I, we, don't, we don't care about the offensive lineman's shoulders. It's really more about our shoulders. Um, it, it, as long as we have him controlled, it, they can be north and south. They can be east or west. If our outside arm's free, we're in a better position to now play outside line to escape and play outside runs. The second our shoulders get north and south, that's where we're kind of in a world of hurt because now that ball is going to be able to bounce outside. Good? Uh, one more just came in. Uh, yes, sir. Two-part question. Do you find an advantage to having the inside foot up versus the outside foot up in the stance? Um, uh, in then, my opinion, okay. I, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Coach. I'll get the second part uh, after you answer the first. No, part. in my opinion, I like it. I like it in the in the run game, um, having that inside foot up. Um, when when we go into uh, passing situations, um, as we'll get on later, I like to make sure those guys are as comfortable as possible. Um, but I typically like to have that inside foot up for the down block. It allows us to to replace our feet a little bit easier. For a reach block, it's going to be harder to to take that in flight adjust on a reach block with my outside foot up. If that makes sense. It's, yes, sir. You know, like right now with that with his outside foot back, if he get when he gets a reach block right now, his first step is going to be here, mm -hmm. opposed to if my outside foot's back up and my inside foot's back, I now have to step here, then here to play the reach. So I think it I think it's easier to play the reach block to play down blocks with my inside foot up. And then the other part, uh, have you found it difficult for younger players to differentiate between the base and reach block and step into versus taking the in-flight adjustment step? Um, you know, I think the, the in-flight adjustment step has been harder um, for younger players to learn. I think the base block is a, uh, it's, it's an easier block, in my opinion, just because you know that guy's taking an inside track to you and we're always outside. Um, of everything, I was outside linebacker. So um, as a nine technique or a go six, a base block's easy because I'm already in my gap, right? It really gets harder when you're an eight technique knowing that you have to play that inside C gap. Um, but I think the, the in-flight adjust has been a little bit more difficult just because it's footwork. Um, they haven't worked before in high school, um, you know, leading up to college. But I think, you know, as an eight technique, the base block is probably the harder, harder thing to teach just because, you know, now we're at a disadvantage. That tight end has inside leverage on us, and we're trying to get to that inside gap. So that's where you work things like steer drill, your reach and gather footwork to get you in position, um, or ultimately if you can't get your body in there, trying to squeeze his body down as tight as you can um, to close down that C gap. And then the last part of uh, the block rec, you know, the down block. Just playing the down block, close into that tackler tight end's hip, Again, um, that's the main thing is you want to make sure they're close to that hip. And then, you know, as you get as you progress, you can start throwing things like second level blockers, right? Like yo, tight ends coming back, guards pulling, and depending on your defense, what call it is, if they're spill or box players, having them to adjust to that as well. But um, you just want to make sure they recognize the block and understand the, the ways to play it. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll kind of teach it to them all, all in a set, right? We won't, we won't just uh, throw it to them all at once. Here are the base blocks. Here's how you play base blocks, and everybody will work the base block, right? Here's a reach block. Everybody will work the reach block. Here's uh, the down block. Everybody works the down block. <clears throat> once they've understand, understood how to play those blocks, now you start really giving them block recognition, okay, where you'll – You'll, you'll put a guy on offense, put a guy on defense, and you'll, you'll tell them different blocks to play. And it's now up to the defender to read the block and play it appropriately. So you're going to see Najee right here. He's going to play these as, a, as an eight technique, okay? Boom, he gets a base block. Right now he knows here's his gap. So you're going to see him do a good job of, boom, controlling the block, working arm over release. Boom, he's in the C gap.
boom, he gets a reach block. This is that, this is that question that was asked earlier. I get a reach as an eight, boom, I'm in, I'm in fine standing right here. He reaches my outside shoulder. I'm going to make him think I'm reach, but I'm going to peek my eyes inside. I'm in position in the C-gap. And then a down block. Down block is an eight technique. You play it the same way as you would as a nine. I'm shuffle squeezing, playing that backside C-gap, closing that hip. So now they've seen all these blocks when they get in the, the team and practice reps, they should be able to play it. So we're watching nine here to the, to the left of the screen. Boom, he gets a reach block. Boom, that's fine. I control my block. You see he's about two, three yards upfield. He thinks he's reached. Now you just want him to play. Now you just want him to get a violent release and, and make a play on the back. But I like his recognition of the block that he's getting. He's seeing this key. He's keeping the tip of the pad of that tight end. He knows what block he's getting. Watch him five here. He gets a base block. Okay. He steps to him. He's got inside hand, his outside arm's free. He's keeping his shoulders square. And again, depending on, on the call, if he's a nine or an eight technique, I like the position he, he's in as a nine technique and as, as an eight technique. If he feels like physically, hey, I can't put myself in a C gap, well, now you just want him to work a, power, a scoot technique to really condense that C gap as much as possible so the run doesn't get in there. What's up, Justin? Uh, what do you have your backers look at pre-snap to key? Do you have them watch like waist, the foot, et cetera? So on rundowns, they're going to key. They're going to periff the ball. They're going to key the tip of the pad of either the tackle or the tight end, depending on what they're lined up against. When we get into passing situations, that's where you go more ball key. Or if you find uh, teams where um, you know, um, you know, typically that offensive lineman they like to to flex the calf or, 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 or twitch the knee before before they kick out, then we'll, we'll switch to things like that. But on one specific downs, um, they're keying the tip of the pad of either the tackle or the tight end. So here's a good job by my nine, number nine to the right. He gets the base block. I wish he would have done it sooner, and I wish the shoulders would have been square, but this is a good job of what I mean by condensing that gap. Once, I, once I'm outside and, and my outside arm's free, I wish he would have kept his shoulders square, but I like how he's condensing the gap. It's a smaller space now for that running back to, to run the ball through, and it's an easier attack for those linebackers to make them in there. It's a good edge. Okay, so that's just a synopsis of kind of what we go through on a, on a day-to-day in our run game. Those are the base fundamentals that they're going to learn in the run game, okay? As far as hand placement, they're going to know they're shaded and, and, and head-up alignment. We aren't in head-up alignments in our defense, but they're, we're, we're going to teach them that anyway, okay? They're going to know how to replace their hands if an offensive lineman has outside or tight end has, outside, uh, has inside hands on them. They're going to understand how to replace their hands. They're going to understand the different types of footwork they're going to use, the different stances in the run game that they have to use as well. And they're going to understand how to strike a block, how to release blocks. Um, now we're going to go into the pass rush phase uh, of fundamentals of what uh, kind of the building blocks of what we teach our guys. Um, we're going to break it down into three basic keys. Um, and from there, the different drill of the different phases of pass rush that we're going to teach them. Okay. So the first phase is the approach, what I like to call the approach, the get off. Okay. Um, to me, the get off is the most important step of pass rush. Okay. The faster I can get off the ball and beat the offensive lineman to a spot, the higher and the, the, my success, um, my success will be in pass rush situations. In pass rush situations, we're, we're reacting off movement, whether it's ball movement, offensive lineman movement, we're finding what's going to trigger first and that's what's going to trigger us off the ball. Um, out of our two point stance, we really want to make sure as a, uh, as edge rushers were what we're, we're really exploding out of our, our stance. We want all of our weight on our front foot. You want to roll off that front foot and explode out of your stance. Um, in my, in my um, personal experience, the get off is like a, a baseball pitcher, right? Um, pitchers do a good job of making th everything look the same when they're throwing pitches, whether it's a fastball, whether it's a curveball, whatever it is, it all looks the same before the pitcher lets the ball out of his hand. With get offs, we want all we want everything to look the same. We don't want to change our get off depending on what kind of move we're using. Everything should be to threaten to make the offensive lineman believe we're threatening speed up the field. 
And that's exactly what we want with our get off, okay? So what we'll do is we'll do something called takeoff or three and bend. What we want to see out of our defenders here is that they're exploding off the ball, right? They're rolling off that front foot. They're taking no false steps. They do a good job of gaining ground with every step that they're taking up the field. And once they've gone up the field, we want to see them bend, dip that top shoulder, that, uh, that inside shoulder as they bend the edge, okay? So right now, in a stance, you really, want to t you really want your guys to have all their weight on that front foot. And what I like to look for is something called shin angles. You almost want a 45 degree shin angle to, um, to that foot to, to, to make sure all the weight is on that front foot. You want their shoulders down. And as they're getting out of their stance, you want their shoulders to stay down. A lot of young rushers, what they'll do is, uh, uh, young rushers and guys who are tall, when they get out of the stance, their first, first thing they do is they pop up. Well, right when I pop up, I'm exposing my chest. I'm giving the offensive lineman surface area. So be cognitive, really key when they're in their stance. Hey, I like the shin angle. It's about 45 degree angle from his foot. His shoulders are over his toes. And his shoulders stay down when he's getting out of his stance, okay? Here, you want to make sure that he's gaining ground with every step. Here, I'm gaining ground. I'm gaining ground. I'm taking I'm, – I'm not wasting any steps. When I get to the top of the rush, I'm dipping that top shoulder, trying to touch grass, bending the edge. Okay. Again, gain ground, gain ground. No wasted movements, no false steps. The reason why you and, – and, you know, false steps is something you really have to emphasize. Um, you know, in pass rush, space equals recovery time, meaning the more space that the, we, we create between us and the offensive linemen, the more time it is for him to block us, the more time it is for the quarterback to throw the ball. So we have to really do a good job of gaining time every chance we get in pass rush to stop that from happening. So you'll see, you'll see the takeoff in the band here. At our time in Colorado, I would have liked him to be have more weight on that front foot, but he does a good job of gaining ground. Once he gets to the top of the rush, he does a good job of bending that edge. Bending the edge, really make it harder for that offensive lineman to, to get surface area on you. And it's harder for these, these tall offensive linemen to, to bend and get in position to block uh, lower pass rushes. So this is, good. This is a, a unique clip here. This kind of goes back to the time aspect I was talking to, right? Okay, right now, this quarterback knows that we are in a zero coverage defense, meaning there is no safeties in the middle of the field. We're bringing... Uh, we're bringing a, we're bringing seven. Okay, he knows right now that he has to get the ball out quick. So the only thing that's going to help us in this situation is no wasted time out of our get off. Right, no false steps, no 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 rounding. We have to we have to make up time. So you're going to see number twenty here. He does a good job with his get off. Okay, he takes no false steps. He's gaining ground with every step, and that allows him to make a play. When most quarterbacks know with zero coverage, they have to get the ball out quick. So a little bit through takeoff drills, we'll also do something to, to, to create a competitive aspect. This is something that we'll do with the D-line. Just, uh, again, get them competing. Get them out there having fun, talking to one another, trying to see who's getting off the fastest. So this is a good instance of that there. So that's the takeoff. That's what we'll do in, in the first phase of the approach is creating, creating and finding ways to, to really improve our get off. The next area is a fight zone or, or the move area. This is where now, hey, we've condensed the space between us and the offensive lineman. Now we have to do two things. We have to do a good job of recognizing what kind of pass that the offensive lineman has given us. Um, depending on his pass, depending on, on, on the set he's given us, is going to tell, tell us what kind of move we have to use this is where things like um, our hand blocks, our hand fighting uh, comes into play. Um, our hips are central in this phase of the pass rush. Um, in order to do a good job of creating moves and executing our moves, our hips have to be turned um, um, to our protector and to our quarterback. It's going to tell us where our body is going. So here we're going to work our hips. We're going to work uh, the gauntlet. Um, wherever our hips are turned, our body's going to go. So you really want your guys to have the ability to flip their hips uh, to the protector, meaning the offensive lineman, the guy that's blocking them. And then once they've flipped their hips to the protector, once they've beaten the block, they got to be able to flip it back to the quarterback. 
So what you want to see here, the first time we go through these bags are they're not gonna they're not gonna throw their hands. You just want to see a violent hip movement. Good hip toss. This is doing a good job, but boom, I've condensed the space. I'm taking away surface area from the offensive lineman. I'm making myself skinny. It's gonna make it harder for him to block us. And the finish. Again, so this is all again just to get them an understanding of the hip movement, right? Flipping my hips to the protector either in which direction. What's up, Justin? Uh, question here, Coach. Uh, when you teach takeoff, do you teach a toe angle for the front foot to avoid widening on the first step? Uh, really, we teach that more out of their stance, right? I like the, the, those guys in their pass rush situations cocked to where they're going. Um, you'll see guys sometimes, and we, we, our guys consistently do it, you know, their toe angle, like you're saying their toe angle, or they'll be lined up straight ahead up field, like they're going up the field. We don't want to go up the field. Our angle should be right at the quarterback, right? So when I'm in my pass rush stance or I'm in my pass rush position, I want to take the, the fastest path to the quarterback, which is a straight line. So angle and position yourself to where I'm going in that direction, right? Don't angle yourself up the field because now you have to go work up the field, then take another step in to get to the quarterback. Angle your, Start yourself angled off in a position to where, you know, those first couple of steps that are gaining ground are going to the quarterback. Again, so you'll see here, no no hands just yet. You just want to see the hip toss. You just want to see the hip toss. And with your guys, make sure when they're working this drill, it's not a, it's not a speed drill. It's not to see, hey, who's going the fastest or how, how can I do it the fastest? Every one of these reps should be treated as one at a time. So one at a time, one individual rep. Boom. I want to see how violently I can flip my hips on this first bag. The next bag is another rep. The next bag is another rep. Make sure they treat this drill one at a time. What's going on? Do you, do you ever come from depth uh, as an outside linebacker, and does that change your blitz, uh, your blitz angle from being on the line? Uh, we will. So in our base, so in our base three four defense, um, at times we, we will do that. We'll show like we're we're dropping down space, and now depending on the quarterback's mannerism, they got to creep up and hit it on the run, right? Um, so as far as the angle, you still want that angle, I th believe, to be at the quarterback. Um, but now opposed to, to um, rolling off the front foot or, or things like that, and make sure they're running into the stance by the time, by the, time the ball snapped. Uh, another question here, Coach. For this drill specifically, um, where's the ideal placement for the coach to stand uh, to see the, the best? Um, I, I, with this drill, because because you can see from all angles, I think just, uh, you know, whether you're on the side, you're on the back. Um, typically for me, I like to be on the last bag because um, right after that last hip turn, we're going to have a quarterback in place for them to finish on. And you want to see them go change their speed off that last bag. Once I flip my hips off that last bag, it needs to be a change of speed from my last hip flip move straight to the quarterback. So I, I typically like to be – at the angle of that last bag, so I see how fast they're coming off that last hip flip. So they've done the hips with no hands, right? They, they felt what it feels like to just go with their hips. Now, once they've done that, you want to throw in the hands. And the hands are very key. The more violent your hands are, the more violent the punch is, the easier it's going to be for you to get your hips turned uh, around, your, around your offensive lineman. So here you want to make sure they're having a violent, we're going club rip here, a violent club. More violent the club is, the more over-exaggerated it is, the easier it's going to be for you to get your hips turned uh, to your protector. So you're going to see five here, right here is where that gauntlet comes in, right? Right now, I could tell he's doing a good job of getting his hips to the protector, the offensive lineman. He's, 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 he's reduced his surface area by getting skinny right there. So now it's going to be harder for the offensive lineman to, to have something to grab on, to have something to punch. This is, a good, this is a, the emphasis of the, of the gauntlet drill working right here. It's in a tight, condensed space. He does a good job getting his hips flipped to that offensive lineman. His shoulder pads are turned, a, a, a nice short surface area that – does a, a great job of helping himself um, become skinny. 
okay? Now we'll work hand blocks. Hand blocks are something that we'll use um, in the situation where, um, you know, we're, we're in, again, we're in that fight zone, right? So you got to equip your guys with tools to allow them to be successful. Um, some of the moves that we'll teach them are with high hands, we're going to keep them high with things like side scissors, forklifts, rip moves. Um, with low hands, our, off, our, defensive, uh, our outside linebackers are going to use chops, they're going to use swims, uh, different hand block moves to keep their hands either high if the offensive lineman shoot them high or low if the uh, offensive lineman shoots them low. Uh, question here, Coach. Are you teaching <clears throat> just the flip of the hips and the feet fall where they may, or is there uh, specific footwork required in this? The footwork is still, in my opinion, a reach and gather footwork as they're, hip, uh, as they're flipping through um, the wide hoop, uh, with the wide gauntlet, right? Boom. I'm still keeping a nice base as I flip my hip. Um, you don't want to bring – again, your feet never want to be tight in a game of football. You're going to lose balance as you do that. So having the base is, is critical at all times through the, through the gauntlet drill. Um, where, 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 in my opinion, the feet may fall where they may is when you do something like the tight gauntlet. The tight gauntlet, you want to have hot feet, right? Your feet need to be moving at all times with the tight gauntlet because it's such a condensed space. And I think that move, that drill is is a lot of the times pass for situations. When you got, come on an inside move, you got a guard, you got a D lineman, you got a center. There are bodies in there, so your feet have to be active and picking them up and putting them down, so that way you stay on your your, your two. So here we go. We got the, the hand blocks here. We're we're teaching offensive linemen shoot their hands high, keep them high. Here he's working the outside single, right? Outside club, boom. And we'll just rip them one at a time. We'll, we'll, we'll shoot them through, boom. Once you see my hands shoot, you shoot your hands. Once you see my hands shoot, you shoot your hands. We go from the outside single now to just the inside swipe. Again, different tools for them to, to, to allow them to work their hands whenever they're in pass switch situations. You always want to, you know, pass rush is a 30-second street fire, so these guys have to be working their hands at all times. Work their hands at all times. High block, keep them high. High block, keep them high. Boom. Keep them high. Keep them high. And one of the things with, with the hand blocks that I like, uh, you know, with, with some that our defensive line coach taught us is – there's always two aiming points that you want to attack as you're attacking an offensive lineman's hands, right? There are weak, there are just physically, there are weak points in the body that our bodies just can't take a lot of uh, a stress at. And that is the wrist and the elbow. So you, so we tell them all the time when we're, when we're attacking offensive lineman hands, you want to take away at the wrist and you want to break at the elbow. Those are the two weakest points of the body on the offensive lineman or just humans in general's arms. So now you're seeing here low, low hands. Low, he's chopping them low. Low, chop them low. Chop them low. Get your guys identifying high hands and low hands so they understand how, how to attack those hands. It's a good job right here. He feels high hands. Outside single. Does a good job getting rid of them in that area of that fight zone, right? We're combat and fight zone. The space between us has been reduced. Now we have to have tools to, to execute in those situations. Same thing here. Boom. He's got high hands. He does a good job taking away at the wrist. It's a good rush. It's a good rush. And again, give so give them tools where when they're in these situations, they know how to attack. And, and, and as coaches, we have to do a good job of identifying what works for our guys, right? Um, so you give them the tools, but everything is not just a, hey, you have to work a chop here. You have to work. Some guys might be chop guys. Some guys might be rips. So we have to do a good job once we've given them the tools, hey, this work move works best for you or hey this move works best for you you got to find ways um to, to help your guys be successful in these situations uh question here coach is uh <clears throat> is there a way to have a faster get off without taking that step backwards 
Absolutely. So when you see when you see, when you're when you see that step backwards, what that's telling me is they have some they have too much weight still on that back foot. Their weights all got to be on that front foot right now. There's still going to be a little step. There's still I like to distribute it about. 80, 85% on that front foot, about 20 to 15% on that back foot. That back foot's going to kind of help propel you uh, forward, but all that weight on your front foot, that's going to be where all the power is generated from, where you have to do a good job rolling off of. Um, but when you see that, like right here by five, boom, that movement right there where he kind of has to move back first tells me he has too much weight on his back foot. He's got to do a better job in these situations of really – emphasizing and focusing on all uh, a majority of that way having to be on that front foot having to be on that front leg the more weight we have on that front leg the, the less wasted movement he's going to have getting out of his stance it's a great job right here attacking the hands it's a great job right here attacking the hands attacking at the wrist and the elbow again those are just some of the tools, the things that they need to have in their toolbox um, when they get in pass rest situations. Now here we're working the side scissors, okay? And again, like we said earlier, we want to make sure that we take away at the wrist and we break at the elbow. People can't take a lot of pressure on that elbow, so the more and more you attack those spots, those are weak spots for the offensive lineman, it's not going to feel good to them. We're watching down here to the left, right here. Horrible get off, right? Ball stepping underneath himself. But what I do like here are his hands. He does a good job of boom. He identifies high hands. He times it up. He sees the offensive lineman shoot his hands. Boom. Attacking the wrist or the elbow. We're trying to take away at those two points. Okay. Wrist and the elbow. So those are just some different hand fighting movements that we'll use as well, okay? And that kind of also incorporates into some of the pass rush moves that we'll use. The number one move for our outside linebackers is always a speed rush. That's going to be the first thing that, that, that they learn, right? Speed off the ball is critical to success in, in, in pass rush, right? The more we have the offensive lineman threatened by our speed, it's going to help allow – um, open up some different things like counter moves, counter spin moves, things like that for us. Um, so, again, when we utilize speed, it has to be speed off the ball, right? All our weight is on that front foot, no wasted steps, no no, no false steps, no things like that. Uh, here, uh, we're not really emphasizing the hip flip. We just want to see you gain ground, sell speed up the field, and bend at the edge once you get there. They have to have violent hands when, whenever they're working these moves. So it could be, a, a, again, here's a series of moves, right? Speed chop, speed dip, speed swim, rip. It is just a straight speed rush that, that we are trying to really threaten the offensive line in there. So you just want them, again, he's not flipping his hips. He's not, he's not doing anything like that. We're just saying, hey, run, run. We're faster than you are, speed rip. Boom, chop, rip. Speed, speed, speed. That's emphasis. So you'll see here, boom, just pop, chop, speed, chop, speed, chop. His hips aren't flipped. He's not worried about flipping his hips. Right now he's thinking, hey, I'm going to beat this offensive lineman to a certain spot. Once I've beaten him there, now I'm working to bend the edge to the quarterback. What's up, Justin? <clears throat> Two questions here, Coach. Uh, first one in regards to the pass rush. Uh, do you put an emphasis on clearing the hips of the O lineman or feel like breaking the elbow will do that by itself? It's going to do that by itself, right? When we're breaking the elbow, at that point, our hips are already flipped to the quarterback, right? So once, I've, once we've broken the elbow, and that's a, a word that we'll also use too, your hips should be cleared, right? And I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I have my 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 outside hand on that offensive lineman's elbow, my inside hip, my inside hip better be on the outside hip of that tackle at that point, right? And then another question here, coach. Just uh, 
in regards to uh, run technique, just to backtrack a little bit, uh, how would you play? How would you play against a tight end wing? Tight end wing. So we, uh, depending on if our guys are, are uh, a drop or a rush, it's going to dictate one who they're kin. Okay. If I'm a rush, I'm going to key that down tight end. If I'm a drop, I'm going to key that that yo tight end. And um, depending on our key is where our hand placement's going to be, right? Um, so we're going to take the same hand placement and footwork to whatever our key is. Um, and, and, and basically play those blocks the same. So the words that we'll use are something called wing adjust and wing bust, okay? That yo, that down tight end blocks out on me, boom, I'm striking, I'm steering, my eyes are in that D-gap crease, right? I'm playing technique. Where it gets difficult now is on the down block, where, where, that, where that tight end is going down on that full eye or through that linebacker, and that yo is now coming to block you. That's where you got to kind of have some eye discipline. Once I feel that tight end is not blocking me, he's not for me, my eye should go from that down tight end to that yo tight end. So again here, this is speed, speed that right, boom. He gets underneath that pad, he's speeding. I'm beating him to that to the level. Now I'm bending the edge to the quarterback. And, you know, this speed rush series, you know, not everybody – and that's where, again, as coaches, we got to identify talent. Not everybody is a bona fide speed rusher, right? Not everybody's Von Miller. Not in, in, everybody's Khalil Mack, right? So, yeah, this is kind of the, 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 the base and founding block because you, you always want to have your outside rushers threatening with speed. Um, but once they've get, gotten that, again, find more tools that, that everybody's effective in. Watch to the left, defensive end here, outside backer. Just speed, speed chop, boom, turn the edge. Turn the edge. You're not going to see him on the right of your screen, but he does a good job on the wide copy. Just, just speed off the edge. Watching the top here. Speed, speed chop, turn the edge. Here's like one of those questions we were asking earlier, right? For our outside backers, we might, he's showing the disguise like he's playing out in coverage. He does a good job timing up the cadence to where now he's just in position to hit it. Boom, speed chop. Speed chop. And the last phase is the finish, okay? Uh, this, to me, is one of the most uh, undercoached areas of pass rush. Um, you know, everybody in this situation, they think, you know, w once you've uh, come off the move, oh, it's just sack the quarterback. Yeah, we believe in sacking the quarterback, but what's almost more important is something that we like to call sacking the ball. Every time you get to the quarterback, we want our guys to think, hey, get the ball out, get the ball out. Um, so we'll give them a – and this is something our entire defense will learn um, – uh, is sacking the ball, right? When we get to the quarterback, we're going to sack the ball. Depending on our leverage on the quarterback is going to tell us if we're breaking the arm or if, we're, or if we're going for the tomahawk. If we're coming to the front side of the quarterback, meaning, hey, that quarterback is looking at me. If I'm a left defensive end and I'm pass rushing against a right-handed quarterback, I'm attacking the front side of the QB. I want to break the arm. So by breaking the arm, we're going to attack the ball with our left, our outside hand, and our inside hand now is going to be there to protect if that quarterback wants to step up in the pocket. If he wants to escape, we're going to have an inside presence there to tackle him down. So here's a move that we'll work in our turnover circuit. Everybody in our defense will understand how to attack the quarterback when they're coming to the front side, okay? Boom, I'm a left outside rusher coming to the front side of the quarterback. My outside arm should now be breaking the arm of the QB, and that inside arm should be there to protect against any step-up, escape lane, escape move of the QB. Okay? He's attacking, and again, you'll see, you see corners, you see DB safeties. Everybody on our defense will understand how to attack the quarterback. 
Now, when I'm coming on the back side of the QB, the blind side, we're going to go uh, say something called a tomahawk. Uh, tomahawk, pen and drape, whatever it is that you, the word that you want to use, they understand now when we're coming from the back side, hey, we're going to stick our hand there on, on the quarterback, so right in between uh, about his forearm. So if he throws the ball regardless, his arm has to interfere with our arm. So we're going to create a fumble that way. And again, if he wants to step up at all, our inside hand is there for any step up, any escape lane the quarterback wants to take. So you see here, boom. This inside hand here is going to be here to protect against any step up move of the QB. And my outside hand now is going to force any sort of fumble that I can on the QB arm. As far as the base fundamentals, man, that we have in, uh, 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 you know, running and, and pass rush, are there any questions that you guys may have? You know, how, how are we doing on time, Justin? Uh, you're good, Coach. You got about uh, five or ten minutes if you need. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop in the chat. Um, yeah, whether, whether it's scheme related or anything like that, man, go ahead. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can knock them off now. Um, if not, if they, if they don't come to, till later, man, um, Here's some of my some of my information. If you have any questions, if you want to email or through Twitter, man, I'm, I'm on both both the avenues, man. So please feel free to reach out. Um, Jay, again, I appreciate you for this opportunity, man. This was awesome. No, I appreciate you, man, uh, jumping on and, and uh, giving us a great presentation. Uh, tons of positive feedback, whether it was in the chat or, or even a couple of things on, on Twitter already. So uh, definitely awesome. I, I know you know it's crazy during a time like this, right? Where we're kind of you know, uh, deprived in a sense to get up here and be able to, to talk about the sport and the position we love, man, is, is a lot of fun. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed uh, listening to it. Oh, yeah, man. It, it's, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. You do got a, a question that just popped in here, Coach. Uh, if, you're, if you're pass rushing uh, and you get run going away, what path do you coach your outside linebackers to take? Um, as far as path, they should just now shut it down, right? You don't want to get too far upfield because the second you do that, again, we're widening inside lanes. So if I'm thinking this pass rush, boom, I'm getting up the field and it's run to me, man, get ready to temp it down low, be able to set the edge and keep that outside arm free. But you can't – don't get too high. The second you get too high, that's where kind of big creases on the inside are created. So you, you don't want that to happen. Uh, what is your ideal size for outside linebackers? Um, you know, I like anywhere between, uh, you know, to, I, I, I really like 6'2 guys, 6'2 guys, 6'3, six, 6'4, six, right, who have the length, the size, the athleticism to play it. 6'1 guys, if they're freaking explosive, dynamic, pass rusher, long arms, we love those two, man. So really, um, really I almost don't have an ideal size. If, if they're guys who can truly get after the quarterback, they have some length, they can play in space, man, we, we love them. Uh, what type of uh, tackle system are you using uh, with Kansas? What did you prefer as a player? Um, as a player, we were that old school, you know, get your head across the ball, tackle, try to create fumbles. Um, but the system that I've really liked, I've really enjoyed is uh, almost that, that hawk tackling system. I think it does a good job, again, of player safety, keeping the helmet um, away from the football, out of the play. Um, but also uh, it, it allows – um, a lack of cutback angles and cutback lanes um, during that style of tackling. Coaching points or drill work for pre-snap movement? Um, really just bulky. Always make sure, like, during those drills, I think you guys realize, and I should have hit it out earlier, there was always a ball involved. So we always make sure, I mean, always make sure that they're seeing what they're, what they're keying off of, right? Give them cadences. Give them, give them all types of things to kind of throw them off. Train them never to, to, to play off sound and off movement, right? Um, again, a quote that our D-line coach uses that I love is, they don't do what you tell them they do. You do. They do what you train them to do. So always train those guys to key the ball, play off movement, whatever it is that they're keying. I would train them in that in their individual drills all the way up until, until um, um, teamwork. Uh, what are your outside linebacker pass drop fundamentals and footwork while reading? Um, the footwork that we'll use while, while reading is something that we call clearing the cleats, right? Um, our guys have to do a good job, especially in today's day and age playing RPO. They have to do a good job of clearing their cleats in that, in that RPO window to, to decipher if it's runaway or, or if they're getting an RPO action. As far as our pass drop fundamentals, uh, we do uh, angle shuffling here. 
Um, so the, so they'll learn um, early on how to angle shuffle with a two re, number two receiver, or uh, if they're if they even have to work out to to the number one, they're going to angle shuffle. Uh, do you ask uh, your outside linebackers to run or cover with number uh, the number two wide receiver? Uh, it, it, it all depends. Um, you know, again on the defensive call, and then uh, on that whoever that person is, uh, depending on uh, you know the matchup. Uh, you know. We, we typically go, uh, you know, if it's skinny ankles, that's not a matchup that we'll like. So there are ways that we can get out of it. But, again, it kind of all depends on the call. But we do have that um, that luxury. Absolutely. Uh, how are you interacting with your players now during these during these crazy times? Any advice for a high school uh, with their players on how to keep them engaged? Um, we're going through Zoom. Yeah, we're going through Zoom, man. We have Zoom meetings every day with our guys, man. And, um, um, I think uh, the best thing for for me, at least, on keeping them engaged, because you know, believe it or not, colleges are going through the same thing with guys being, you know, at home here or there, out and about. They have a bunch of outside distractions. I try to keep it um, not too short, but I like to keep it a, a solid window where I can keep their learning attention, right? And I like to ask them questions. Um, I'll, let, I'll let them, you know, I want I want to hear them talk to me and make sure they understand what's going on and and I know what they're seeing. So I try to keep it as interactive as possible. Let those guys give me as much feedback as, as they can. Um, so that way it's nice and engaged and we're getting something out of the meetings. Awesome. Coach, I, I appreciate your time, man, and uh, jumping on here and, and not only giving a great presentation, but, you know, answering a bunch of questions. Um, like I said, you know, there's nothing but positive feedback on the presentation, man, and uh, that was really great. So I, I thank you for coming on, man, for real. Man, appreciate you for having me, man. Again, if you guys have any, any questions, feel free to reach out, man. Um, this is awesome.